Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. In today's video, I will be having a go at water marbling and attempting to lift the pattern off the water onto my aquacast blanks. The instructions for the paint say that they can be used for many porous surfaces, including plaster of Paris. And so I thought Aquacast has similar properties to plaster of Paris. So let's give it a go. Let's see if I can make some wonderful patterned coasters and other bits and bobs. So if that sounds interesting, stay tuned and enjoy the video. <laughs> Water marbling is messy, so make sure you protect all your work surface where you will be working and make sure you've got space to put everything that you're going to need to dry. You'll need some gloves, any tools that you want to use, some kitchen roll would be handy and lots and lots of blanks. I've made Aquacast blanks and Aquacast is from Elichem Resins and I've made lots and lots of little shapes in this mould from Moulds and Shapes so that I've got lots to experiment with. You don't want to get all your mixture ready and then run out of things to use. I didn't get off to the best start with this video because I forgot to press record on the very first bit. <laughs> so let me just explain what I've done here. Water marbling works best if you thicken the water first and that is what I did. The Pebio set comes with the marbling bath powder. You mix one litre of cold water with two teaspoons of the powder and you leave it for two hours to thicken up. The colours I'm using today are from Pebeo. They're water-based paints and they come in a little bo dropper bottle so it's easy to put your drips onto the surface of your water. It, there's two drawers in the box. In the top drawer is all your colours and your marbling bath powder. And in the bottom drawer you are supplied with some paper and some skewers for doing your special effects. I didn't get given this I bought it because I fancied treating myself to something different so anything I say you can trust is completely honest. As you can see I've used a large white tray for my water. It was good for filming this video because it was white and it's all I had that was white but really it wasn't deep enough. I would suggest using something like a big casserole dish or something so you can get a better depth of water. I did find that the things I was dipping kept touching the bottom of the tray so yeah it was good for the video but I wouldn't recommend using a shallow tray like this. Before making this video I did have a couple of quick attempts but this was my biggest attempt that I've done so far. Yeah I just had a little play before um, and so I'm still learning and what you will see today is me just making it up as I go along. Don't expect very much expert advice. <laughs> You're just watching me experimenting. I did learn a lot as I went along and so it, it is worth staying tuned for the tips you'll get along the way of what does work and what doesn't work. And yeah, so what I'm going to do is just show you some of the bits of what I did because I was sat there for about an hour I think <laughs> playing with it I had such good fun but you don't need to see all of that and you know what a lot of the pieces that I did didn't turn out good but a lot of them did so there's no point me showing you all of them especially the ones that turned out not so good because everyone will just turn off and think it's rubbish honestly it's not <laughs> stay tuned until later on because what I'm going to do is show you the finished results that turned out good at the end so you won't see much detail of the finished results during the actual process you'll see them all at the end so anyway I'm waffling now as you can see here I'm trying to make some flowers and they did turn out really good for a while 
until it all started to spread. And this is one of the things that you learn from experimenting, which colours spread out the most and which colours stay in position. And it seems to be the yellow really does spread out, so it doesn't keep its shape for very long. So I think the best way to do it is to let it finish um, doing all its movement before you you do your special effects. So that's one thing that I learned. Here I'm just trying to add some centres to the flower because obviously it all just spread out so much. And yeah, I just tried lots and lots of different ways. And in the end, what I ended up doing was swishing this all around with an afro comb just to see what would happen with that as well. I'm a bit like that. I just get carried away and just try loads of different things. So I had a bit of a space there and just adding some more green and squiggling it around a bit to see what happens. So because most of the things that I was coating were small, I was just looking for little parts of the pattern that I thought would look nice on one of my pieces. So it doesn't really matter for me what the bigger picture is and you know, just find the small bits that I like the look of. And yeah, it's all a little bit quick where I'm showing you because I got a little bit excited and I didn't take very long showing you what I'd done. But like I said, at the end, you're going to see all these properly. And yeah, as you can see, it sticks to the Aquacast very nicely, immediately. It's really good. And one thing I forgot to mention was I haven't sealed the Aquacast all I did was make them and allow them about a day to dry out. I found that if you do the sealing of them first, because I did experiment with this, the paints don't stick to it as well. So yeah, I would, I would recommend doing it without sealing them. So as you can see, I turfed out my old Afro comb and started dragging it along the surface. Don't let it go too deeply into the water. I found if you can just kind of rest it on the surface as you're dragging, it works better. And as soon as I'd started doing that, I was drawn to those lines on the right hand side. I just liked the way they looked. So my first one here looks very simple, but at the end you'll see how lovely that one turned out. And yeah, just kept looking for nice bits to grab the pattern from. I found that the blue is a bit thick, um, so be sparing with the blue. And also you will see that it looks like it's all pooling on the top of the pieces. And that's because it is. I found that if you kind of let it give it a bit of a shake and let those excess bits drip off, it really helps it. But once it's dried out, don't worry, it will look a lot better, especially this one. I don't know if you can see, but I'm letting it drip down into the water. And yeah, because that excess water can be quite muddy. So try to shake it off if you can. And yeah, when you see that one at the end, you'll see it looks a lot different once it's all dried out. After a while, I found that some of the pieces were getting white patches where the colour just didn't stick to it. Uh, I don't know if that's because I didn't let my Aquacast dry out for long enough or if it's just something to do with the marbling process and it changing after you've done a few pieces. I don't know. But yeah, I did find that occasionally there would be some blank patches. But yeah, like I say, just, just have a go. It's lots and lots of fun and you will find out for yourself the little strange things that happen and the really good things that happen and also the ones, the things that just don't work very well at all. <laughs> I love this one. I'll show you that better soon, but that one was one of my favourites. So the more I progressed with this and the more I moved everything about, you can see it's starting to look a little bit kind of nondescript but do you know what some of my best ones were from this faded area here and yeah you'd still get lots and lots of very delicate patterns so if you like more subtle colors kind of mix it around a lot more I loved that one too 
<laughs> yeah, so if you mix it around a lot more, you do get more subtle effects. Another tip I would give you is if you're after a really pastel and subtle effect, one thing I found was as soon as you've dipped it, wipe it, you know, with a baby wipe or just on a flat piece of paper, wipe off all the wetness and you will find that the paint will have stained it immediately and that won't wipe off, but your excess paint will wipe off and you will get a very, very subtle effect. It all depends what effect you're after. So when your water gets really messy like this is and you kind of want a, a blank canvas again, just take a piece of kitchen roll or a piece of paper. It would probably be better to use paper, less, less wasteful and maybe you'll get a nice pattern on your paper that you can use. So yeah, just clean off the surface. As you can see, some of the paints have dropped to the bottom, but that doesn't matter. It's only the surface of the water you need to be concerned about. So once you've finished and you've tidied up all your mess, leave them to dry out for a couple of days. Or if you've got a resin curing machine, which I have, <laughs> I just put them in there on a really low heat for a few hours and that really helped them to dry out quickly. And then after that, I sealed them. And here I'm using the Hydroflow Sealer from Elichem Resins and just one of those fine cloths that you get for... Um, cleaning your screen you know on your ipad or your phone or even for your glasses it's just one of those and yeah i'm just wiping it on and so yeah that one looks a lot clearer now doesn't it than it did when it first came off the marbling um, bath and it's, and it, it's jazzy <laughs> a little bit psychedelic but i like it it's quite cool and yeah so that's all i'm doing sorry i keep going out of focus and you're getting a little bit of a close-up here, but I'm going to take some photographs and show you them all a little bit better in a while. But first, let me show you one more thing. After my pieces were all sealed, I left them about half an hour, I suppose, and I used my silver and gold pens to decorate the edges. I just felt they needed a little bit of finishing off. This is a pilot marker. I actually picked up the wrong one. I thought it was my Let's Resin one, which I love. So I'm just painting the edges like if you're if you've done resin before you'll have seen resin coasters done like this and you can do it just the same with aquacast after you've sealed it but then I would say seal it again after it's dry just to make sure it stays in position doesn't scratch off so as promised we have some close-ups now of the best results that I got some are better than others and yeah there's different elements I like of each one I think my favorite ones are the ones with more white in the background like that one and just you know subtle effects on it but yeah there's so many different effects you can get with this that the world's your oyster really and it's so much fun I haven't had so much fun in my craft room for ages and I think I might be hooked on water marbling now so I hope you're going to have a go. The links to everything I've used will be in the video description, as always. And if you haven't already subscribed and you would like to, please do and give me a thumbs up. It helps me so much. And I will see you again next time. Thank you for watching and bye for now.